Today I'll be providing a demonstration of masking an EDI file, X12271 to be specific. Let me show you a little bit about what I have set up so you can kind of follow the dialogue as we move forward. I have a Delphix engine that is not configured, a Delphix masking engine, not configured for any jobs, any environment. So we'll actually start right from the beginning. I have um, a Linux server that has um, the 271 files as if it was an, an SFTP incoming directory and you're going to have your EDI files. I have two, for example, here, 271, 270. And then I also have the format section. It's important to have some of these formats. Part of this will be part of um, importing into the definition of the masking job. In this case, I have the EDI uh, files, and I'll show you what I'm, I'm looking at here, specifically um, this particular file. As you can see, each one of these files is going to be delineated by a code, field record 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what, based on whether it's the provider or it's the patient or the date of birth. So it's important to add this text file, and you'll see when this comes in handy. If you haven't already, it's, it's just going to create a of time. Once these files are imported, the 271 format or the 270 format or the 835 format, they can be reused throughout the Delphix engine. So it's not something you have to recreate each time. Okay, and then in terms of what the actual file itself looks like, i um, show you what that is here. So, um, view the uh, 271. This is what we're actually going to be masking. You'll see this is what the typical file looks like. It's usually record after record, hundreds of records. We're going to be most interested in this example is the patient information, the NM1IL, and the patient's date of birth. So we're going to be masking those two. We'll be defining also the provider information. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about those. So this particular one is the PR, the provider information. Again, it's defined um, by the file itself. Uh, you can download those file definitions from cmsgov.gov. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to log out and log back in just so that I don't get timed out during this process. I'll probably do it again anyway, but just in case so I know I'm set here as I was staging. Signing into my Delphix engines all on the same network. And here I go. So before I get started at all, I have to actually define my file. Now within the, the EDI files, they're generally considered delimited files. And so I'm just going to create a delimited file to identify this. Again, once I define this the first time, and I assign anything else this particular file um, name, then it'll be able to um, recognize it and not have to define it each and every time. And this is again is a delimit now. If it was something other than if I had to import this file, it would be importing something from like a mainframe or a copybook or something like that. That's the very first step you're gonna do. The next step is we're going to create the environment. So there's going to be two environments. There's going to be a source environment for a file, and there's going to be a target environment. We're looking at what we call on the fly. That means it's going to read from the source, and it's going to write the exact file with the changes to a target. And that definitely works, especially when you're working with your SFTP incoming, and maybe you have that in production, and it's production data, and you want to actually write it to a non-production environment. You can simply send it over to a non-production environment. So let's get started. Add an application. I'm going to call this EDR demo. Again, this is a completely brand new Delphix environment, and I want to do this just to keep it simple. So I'm going to add an environment, and I'm going to call this uh, select my application. My environment is going to be EDI 271 source. And the purpose of this is going to be for masking, and also, and then I'm going to do very similar with the target. You know, um, same is going to be for the same application name, and I would call this EDI two seventy one target. And the purpose of this is also for masking. 
Now within the, within the Delphix, when you're masking files, it's really only important to create a connection for the source. There's really not anything other than that um, that we're going to need to create. So I'll create my connection, choose my type, another file, uh, and this is going to be connection name. I'm going to call this EDI. 271 source connection mode SFTP it'll open up that information which is going to be 10.0.130 port 22 I like to give a full path just because you can be able to and then I always test my connection in case I have a typo in there somewhere and then I can save it and for sources that's all you need just being able to read that's going to be able to read everything on that file you're not limited to one file per source you can actually have multiple files in that source directory so let me go ahead and do the same with the target create a connection Connection name is going to be EDI 271 target. Connection will be very similar, very same. Server name, path, similar, right? The whole path. Username will be oops. And save it. Now there's going to be a lot more now that has to happen. This now we need to create a rule set because this is the actual location where we want this to be placed. So the rule set, create a rule set for this particular one. We're going to call this name uh, EDI demo. Uh, how about demo EDI two seventy one? That's my rule set. Oh, and let me do this. All right. Choose my connector. That's going to be my target. And it's which is the file I'm taking this particular file. And then I want to double check this file and make sure. Uh, okay, yeah, we want to make sure we associate this file with that new file that we created. And um, just so you understand, we need to have this as a tilde. I think it's a slash r slash n. And then the delimiter is a star. And this kind of ETL kind of stuff going on. There we go. As far as inventory is concerned, we're going to find out this is where we're actually going to build that record. And this is where that other file is handy for us, right? So let's go through and start defining record types. Now, this is important. It's all capital, no spaces, no funny characters. So let's go with nm1 underline pr. It's going to be, have two field identifiers because NM1 itself is identified by NM1 in position 1 and then it's PR in position 2. And I don't worry about the link. But I'm going to import this file. We talked about those uh, files. My uh, formats and this is the NM1 PR format that I showed and let's open that file. And let's save this file. If we save this file, you'll see it's going to pre-fill all those fields for us right down the line. And then from here, we'll be able to define how we're going to match that. So let's import the next field record. Um, let's try this one, the NM1 IL for the patient ID. And again, this is all defined on that record itself. And I'm going to make this two. Position is one. 
and then the IR, and that's position two. I'm going to select this perk file format, which is the NML one open. And then when it, once it gets in there, I should be able to save it. And I was waiting for that to pop up. And I'll go ahead and save that. And you'll see the IL, which is your name information. And then finally, I'll add one more, which is going to be the date of birth information. As an example, you don't have to do the entire record. You only need to pull in uh, what you're interested in. And this is just one, one uh, number of fields that identify that this is a specific record. So we will go... DMG is what it's called, it's in position one. So when the masking engine reads DMG, it knows that first position is going to be uh, what is identifying it is the date of birth record. Open this one. Wait until that pops up, shows me it's uploaded. Is. Okay. Now showing you this record, this is what we have now. This is what a typical file format is going to look like because it's multi-tier type. Um, it's not a simple it's CSV file where you have record one, record two, and then comma delimited or tab delimited or anything like that. This is a specific um, record field. So in this place, we're going to be interested in masking the date of birth. Right? So I'm going to choose the date of birth and I'm going to go ahead and mask it. I'm just going to go with a simple date shift. And then it's important to ensure you have the format of the file correct in what you're doing. Otherwise, obviously, it'll be uh, in error because it won't write it properly to the other end. And the other thing we're going to be interested in this file to show you is the first and last name. And we'll ask the first and last name. And we will choose this as a um, last name. And we'll just do a simple last name secure lookup. And any, remember, anything that's defined in this masking engine as a last name secure lookup is going to have the same results. And then this will be a first name secure lookup. So we will choose um, first name secure lookup and choose the algorithm as first name secure lookup and save it. So now we have a fully formatted inventory and rule set for the EDI files. So the next step, of course, is going to be creating the, uh, the masking job itself. And here's why I'll create the masking job. I'm going to call this uh, EDI demo. Uh, masking method is going to be on the fly. It means it's going to read from the file in one location and write to a file in another location. What's the rule set? There's only one in this case, but it, obviously if there were multiple, there would be a list. Source environment is here. Source connector, there. Number of streams, that type is not necessarily information, so we can save that for this file. Once it's saved, you now have a job in which you can run this masking job. Go ahead and run it. And while that's running, I'll go ahead and take a look at, um, let's go here to the target directory. Target, and then, um, See what we have going on here, the 271 file. And this should be, and once it's complete, we'll actually start, um, this file will actually then have text information in it. In the meantime, I'll show you what's happening here. Nothing here, but this is again, um, these different formats. I wanted to show you this one um, while that's running. It, and it's just this small system I have, obviously, and it's much faster for all the records, but let's see what we have here. Here's the full definition of format. Do this, and um, this is what we downloaded, you know, obviously from, from the CMS site, and it's showing you each and every identifier, that this is the pair. This format example, NM1, PR, or whatever, is showing you in the identifier code, it's a non-person, it's a company, and it goes on. So this, this is something you can download, search X12 EDI formats, and, and you'll get these types of files. So you can start building your own library. ETL team 
If you have an ETL team, they have all this stuff defined. Talk to your ETL team. Looks like our job is done and it was succeeded. We now have text in that file, the, ED, uh, the 271 file. So let's take a view of that file and see how the masking completed. And if you recall, um, we used to have Jennifer Meacham. We now have Patrick Buckmister. And then the, um, the actual birth date was 422. And now the birth date is 426. And I'll show you that here on our source. Um, And I will view that text. If you recall, that was what we entered. And there's Jennifer Meacham and then the 422 birthday. And that's all it really is to masking on these particular uh, EDI files. Thank you.